This is a demonstration that I've put together to explain a concept in uh, solid state physics known as Brillouin zones. Um, a lot of you won't be familiar with this. Uh, I, this is intended as a video more of a technical nature for higher year undergraduates and graduate physics students. But Brillouin zones is a rather difficult concept to understand and often you get shown these beautiful pictures of uh, three-dimensional Brillouin zones. They're quite elaborate and difficult. And that just obscures the concept that uh, lies underneath Brillouin zones. And so the demonstration I want to do today, I want to get right to the heart of what's actually going on with the Brillouin zone. So just to give some background before I show you the demo, um, one of the important things that we can do in solid state physics is we can talk about a crystal lattice and we can talk about its reciprocal lattice or k-space, which tells us something about the uh, wave number for waves related to the periodicity of the lattice. Okay. And so just to give you a, a place to begin from, you might be aware of the fact that you have, uh, for example, a thing known as an extended zone scheme and a thing known as a reduced zone scheme. Okay, and so these are electron bands in a solid. And so you get first band, second band, third band, you get gaps at the Brillouin zone edges. And these correspond to Bragg reflection of the electron wave. Of course, you can reduce this to what's known as a reduced zone scheme by subtracting a reciprocal lattice vector from your higher Brillouin zones. And by doing that, you can translate them back into the first Brillouin zone. Okay? And you'll notice something interesting here, that this is done by mirror reflections. Okay? So this first band here is mirror reflected around the first Brillouin zone edge back into the first Brillouin zone. And this third band up here in the third Brillouin zone gets reflected into the second zone and then reflected again into the first zone. And so it retains its original shape when it comes across. Okay, so anything that's making two zone jumps or an integer number of two zone jumps stays the same way. Anything that's making a one zone jump or an odd number of zone jumps will be mirror reflected. Okay? And so we'll see that will kind of pop out in the demonstration. But the easiest thing to do is not to make it difficult and look at three-dimensional Brillouin zones and try and understand what's going on, it's to make it as simple as possible, okay? And so the easiest way to do this is to just throw away any sort of three-dimensional notion of crystals and just think about crystals as 1D, okay? And so you can imagine that your crystal in 1D is just a lattice of points. You can see them there, the black points just here with a space in A. And your reciprocal lattice then is a set of points on a 1D chain. And these time, this time they're spaced by 2 pi over a, okay? And so your Brillouin zones are just the Wigner site cell, okay? So it's the um, set of all points closest to the point of interest. Um, and in a 1D chain, that ends up being a really simple structure, right? It's just the perpendicular bisector of the 1D chain. So everything on this interval here is in the first Brillouin zone. And then you define your higher Brillouin zones as the perpendicular bisectors to the nearest neighbours, okay? So the perpendicular bisector to the second nearest neighbour runs through here, and so this is the edge of my second Brillouin zone. The third nearest neighbour is this one here, and the perpendicular bisector of it is this one here, so that's the edge of my third Brillouin zone, and so forth, and this runs all the way out. And so you'll notice here that the Brillouin zone edges just lie at half integer multiples of the uh, reciprocal lattice point spacing. Okay? And so now you imagine you can take some wave, um, so let's take this blue wave to begin with, and we can make its wavelength equal to two times the lattice spacing, then it will correspond to a k of pi over a, and so it actually corresponds to a point that sits right on the first Brillouin zone edge. We can double the wavelength, make lambda equal to 4a, and so that corresponds to k equals uh, pi over 2a, and so it would be a point that sits in the middle of the first Brillouin zone, and you can imagine shortening the wavelength, this red trace up here, where the wavelength is equal to a, and it corresponds to a uh, k vector of 2 pi over a, and so it sits here on the edge of the second Brillouin zone. Okay? And so you can take any wavelength you want and you can plot it as some point in this um, Brillouin zone scheme in k space just down here. Okay? And we can take this idea that we have up the top down to here that we can transfer any um, point in this space we can subtract a reciprocal lattice vector and translate it back into the first Brillouin zone. Okay? And so what we should find if we think about the way this mirrors is that the point at the 
edge of the second brillo on zone should match in behavior the point at the um, inside edge of the first brillo on zone and the point at the edge of the uh, third brillo on zone should match the behavior at the point at the edge of the first brillo on zone and so forth okay and so if we come through these brillo and zones everything should look the same in each of them just mirrored one about the other okay now the real central principle behind brillo and zones is a process known as aliasing Okay. And so what's going on, aliasing is where you have a discrete sampling of some wave and that wave has a wavelength shorter than your sampling time. And what happens is the extra information in that wave disappears, um, you can't see it. So for example, um, in this particular picture here, imagine I've got a wavelength with lambda equals a and I've got a wavelength with lambda equals 2a. At each of these individual lattice points here, you're at a node of that wave. And so if you're sampling just at the nodes corresponding to these points in the lattice, you can't tell the difference between lambda equals 2a and lambda equals a because your, your wave is a node at either place. Okay, And so that's the process known as aliasing. And this is why you can translate the edge of the second Brillouin zone back into the first Brillouin zone and see absolutely no difference at all. So what I might do is fire up the demo and uh, give you an example of how this works. Just to introduce the demonstration, I have a, um, a rotating fan blade with a sticker marked on it and a strobe lamp. Um, and so the strobe lamp will in effect be my, my lattice points. Okay, it's a discrete sampling of an object with a variable wavelength. And the rotation of my fan blade will correspond to the wavelength in here, so I can change it in time. And so, in effect, what I'm doing is translating from a lattice and a wave system in space to a lattice and a wave system in time, okay? So, my lattice points, instead of being a regular ordered array in space, become a regular ordered array in time. It's my strobe sampling of the fan system. And my wavelength in here just becomes the period of the fan, okay? So, all I've done is just switched from space to time. Perfectly simple way to do it. Anyway, since I'm going to be using a strobe lamp, if you uh, have ep epilepsy or you're sensitive to uh, flashing lights, you might want to stop watching here. Um, sometimes it can cause a reaction. If you find anything funny happening while you're watching the video, then uh, feel free to look away.